Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. So earlier in the day, I recorded a, a live stream for the Hornet and showing the uh, updated Caucasus map for 2.5. And then after that, I did a little addendum to show uh, the Lex Vapors and some rocket attacks. But unfortunately, it seems that the second one overwrote the first one. So you guys were unable to view it uh, on the page. So, um, so you guys could, you know, see mostly what happened in the first one. I want to go ahead and uh, try my best to reproduce the first live stream. So um, you can uh, take a look at the Hornet and uh, the Caucasus map for 2.5. So here we are on the Hornet and here we're outside the Hornet. And you've probably seen a lot of this already in uh, screenshots and various other uh, videos we've done. And we're here at uh, MyCop. It's in the summer, I think about 7.30, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, with uh, eight, uh, 8 out of 10 clouds are set. So um, the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and start up the Hornet, and it'll be much like the earlier video I did, uh, although with uh, the sharp-eyed view, we'll probably notice a few little changes and a few little additions that we've um, added to the Hornet since that video was made. So let's go ahead and first uh, do a quick pre-flight. I uh, actually want to go ahead and set my tack in a lot lower than last time where it kept uh, beeping all the time. Uh, if I'm going from a runway, I want to make sure that we have the anti-skid already set to on. Whereas if you're starting the carrier, you want to make sure it's already set to off. Uh, looks good. Uh, oh, lights. Okay, so let's go ahead and get her started uh, first with the battery. Uh, voltage looks good. PSI looks good. Uh, fire check. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Let's go ahead and cycle the battery. Engine fire and left. Test the B circuit. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. And release. Okay, it's all good. Uh, next step, uh, APU. And since the last video, we've actually uh, increased the time to about you know 14 seconds or so, which is a bit more realistic for the uh, APU startup cycle. Okay, green light. Let's close the uh, canopy. And we've also uh, increased the uh, canopy motor sound a bit. Okay, now let's go ahead and get the right engine going. And 20%. Uh, let's clear this MC. Let's uh, get our displays on. Flight control. Flight control. Yeah, okay, one of the first things I want to do is I want to go ahead and set my left DDI to the FCS page. Clear. Restack. Fit. Okay, so go ahead and uh, get the INS aligned. Now what's going to happen is uh, later on on the HSI you'll actually have an indication uh, that shows you the INS alignment status, uh, just not in there quite yet. And we'll rotate the uh, bleed air to open the uh, ECS valves. And the defog handle uh, 
can actually hear the increase in the uh, ECS air versus less. We don't need a whole lot today. Let's set up the USC now. Uh, radio channels, uh, one to three, and number two to manual. Radar altimeter on. On cage to standby attitude indicator. Radar altimeter on. Let's send it to 200 feet. And now we'll go ahead and get the left engine up and running. And with the uh, declare switch here, you can determine how much information you actually want on the HUD. So right now it's in norm. We can go to uh, reject one. And then reject two. I prefer reject one. Okay, engines are up and running. Let's restack. Now we've got some FCS indications. Clear those. Golden. Trim. Let's bring that up to auto. So we've got uh, zeros and 12. Now let's go ahead and run a uh, SES bit, which is something new. So we're just going to um, hold up the SES bit switch here and hit the OSB here. There we go. And now it's going through the uh, bit test, and which would be moving the control surfaces as well. And that sound you just heard, that was the uh, APU shutting down, which is uh, another new sound since the last video. Okay, FCS is good. Sit back in the uh, the other bit test for the uh, the nav and the stores. Those are uh, still in work. We'll take a look at those in a, uh, a later video. Let's put uh, the oxygen on. Uh, test the uh, probe. our test. Good. Now, let's set up a couple things on the uh, HSI. So let's put our time USC to uh, Zulu on the HUD. And we'll go to uh, data, aircraft, and we're going to turn off that pesky uh, TAS. The uh, terrain of uh, one's warning system. And we come back to SCS. And while we're here, um, we'll take a look at some other the uh, DDI pages we have. There's a couple more we still need to uh, put in there uh, during the early access, but you know, so far, um, let's see, uh, the SA, a uh, situational awareness, will come later. Uh, the uh, EW is very much in work right now. And we're actually um, changing our plan a bit. We're going to do the, um, I guess the uh, ALE uh, 47 and the LQ 65. Uh, coming back, uh, Asm's Elevation is one of the new radar modes that will be coming later on. A HUD you've seen, uh, Tech Radar we'll take a look at, and Stores you've seen. Uh, coming back, uh, Checklist, of course. Uh, engine. FCS you've seen, um, the FP, uh, F-Pass will do later on, uh, fuel here, and let's come back to the bit. Actually at this point we'll go ahead and go to the FCS, and we'll bring up the checklist on the left. Looks good. Okay, at this point we'll go ahead and move our INS to nav. Ready to operate, yep, actually operate when you're on the ramp. 
Uh, release the brake. Flaps down to half. Skid is on. Hook bypass to field because we're going to be landing in an airfield later on. Uh, we'll put the lights on. Oh, and last check around the cockpit. Nope, oh, bingo fuel. Let's make that to, uh, how about 6,000? Okay, good. Let's go ahead and uh, taxi out to the runway. And also, since the uh, last video, we've been, uh, we changed the uh, braking amount a bit, so you can uh, better uh, taxi at less than 75% uh, on the engines. And as mentioned, uh, this is the uh, new Caucasus map, the updated one, for 2.5. What's that uh, Yak-52 doing there? And this is uh, the summer. Uh, all details pretty much maxed out at this point. Oh, nose wheel steering on. And uh, this map, as well as uh, all the other maps, are now using uh, speed trees. And Pretty much most of the um, tree implementation is complete uh, for all seasons now. Most of what's going down is just some tuning as well as updating uh, older missions and campaigns to adjust the, most of the position of the units to account for uh, a lot of the map changes, in particular uh, the forest locations. See, we have the uh, procedural grass in the Caucasus map now as well. And now, oh, we have a MI-24 doing here for some reason. Bring her uh, short here on the uh, pull short. Now, okay, at this point, let's go ahead and arm up the, uh, the seat. Tighten straps. Uh, check our checklist. Flaps 12, seat arm, nose are steering. Oh, the SCS looks good. Okay, uh, traffic check. Let's go take the runway. Keep that for now. And our holder here. Okay, left DDI to HUD. Holding the brakes up to 80%. Wipe the controls. Looks good. Least break, full burner. Rotate. 
gear up. Flaps up. Corner knots, let's take her upstairs. to uh, the west and we'll fly over the uh, the mountains and then out to the Black Sea and then from there we'll head south and uh, land A little IR track in here A track IR And one of the things you may notice from earlier uh, screenshots and such is that the uh, forests now have a much more uh, natural shape to them, not the um, kind of long uh, straight sides anymore. Um, just much more random looking and, again, natural. And at this point, let's go ahead and uh, bring up our air radar. And we'll change our bar to a four bar, range up to 40. As it looks good. Uh, we can look good our sub-level data. Come back out. And let's put our uh, left DDI to our source page. And we see we have some rockets loaded, uh, some M7, and uh, a bag of gas down the middle. Actually, we can use our HOTAS and we can uh, go directly to AIM-7, AIM-9, or air air gun. And you can see the actual cut-throughs, the forest for the power lines. Again, just giving that uh, better sense of authenticity. Now, fortunately, I really wanted to show off some of the new uh, vapor effects, but we have a little strange bug where if you uh, do a, a ground start, then once you take off, uh, for some reason it's not working. It's only working when you do an air start. But um, earlier I recorded essentially a part two of this where I showed that off, so um, you know, feel free to take a look at that. But you can see some of the wing flex we have in the, on the Hornet now. And the nice thing about the Hornet, um, based on your angle of attack, it really talks to you in terms of the amount of shake uh, and even the sound. So let's take a look at that. Usually around 20 or so, you really start to hear it. Now I got the shake. Let's leave it off. Let's play with uh, rockets a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and arm them up. Arm. So now we got a, uh, a CCIP rocket reticle. And you can see some of the new uh, reflections within the canopy. And in particular VR it looks really fantastic. Altitude. Pay up, pay up. I 
Alright, that's it for our rockets. Let's go back into a nav. Simply uh, reselect uh, AG. And put it back in safe as well. Now when you're in nav mode, you can uh, cage or uncage the HUD. So when it's caged right now, and your uh, velocity vector is not showing true, I'm going to do like a rudder turn here. You'll see the ghost uh, velocity vector out there. And the weapon, so let's go ahead and uh, bring left DVI back to our fuel page. And that's probably my biggest concern right now. And with the, uh, the new tree system, uh, naturally they have collision and they block line of sight. So they're going to be um, you know, a lot more fun to play with and no more ghost trees that you can fly through. And particularly for helicopters, this will you know, naturally make a really nice uh, change. Also, we have the uh, nice uh, projections of the uh, shadow trains now as well. And when you do a uh, more of a, a morning or early evening flight, it uh, really makes a nice difference having the shadows. Just the number of trees uh, in the updated map is just astronomically more than we have in 1.5. So it'll take a course of uh, roughly uh, 270 and bring us out to the coast. The other thing you'll notice is that even in the uh, more uh, emptier parts of the train, we have a lot of scattered trees and such, just to give it a more filled out, uh, populated look. And as well, um, all the buildings uh, as well have been retextured and updated. And as you may have saw back at uh, MyCop, uh, all the airfield surfaces, the runways, the taxiways, and the ramps have all been retextured as well. And of course, I must be probably noticing just the much better resolution of the terrain mesh. So you don't get those uh, very triangular uh, mountain peaks anymore. Much more rounded and natural now. Yeah, let's bring her up to like 25,000 feet. Give you a better look around. And you just, you know, see how great the uh, view distance is now as well. And this is probably, I think, one of the stronger points of our map system is that uh, it looks really good anywhere from grasshopper height, you know, up to over 50,000 feet. And, you know, a lot of engines have a problem of being able to have that great diversity in altitude and still looking good.
tank pressure. So if you're over the coast now, so we'll go ahead and bring it down and we'll follow uh, the coast south. As you can see, the new uh, refinery uh, down there off my right wing. And you note the um, updated clouds, not new clouds, uh, just more of an updated the current technology. But we certainly plan to do uh, improved technology for the clouds uh, later on. As you see in some of the uh, other videos uh, with the new trees and the improved elevation uh, mesh, uh, flying down valleys at high speed just takes a, a whole new life, uh, much more enjoyable than it used to be. And as well with this much higher level of detail, uh, titles like com Combined Arms will also be, I think, much more enjoyable as well. It's something we certainly want to flesh out more here in the future. And one of the, the, the big holdups on Combined Arms has been having really high, highly detailed terrain to really take advantage of ground units. And I think we're just about there now. And of course, in addition to all the trees, we also have the new uh, procedural grass. And we're also um, you know, looking at putting speed tree grass in there as well, which would you know, even further enhance the visuals. Let's take her out over the water now. That's good timing. Go ahead and clear that master caution. And also in the map, we've uh, done some updates on the road network, uh, just mostly uh, cleaning up uh, roads that maybe uh, didn't connect where they should, so it'll make routing a lot easier in the updated map as well. And a uh, oil derrick up here. Let's go ahead and buzz that. We're definitely cooking along here. Okay, so we'll uh, follow the uh, coast now, and we'll uh, come in for a landing here shortly. And you also note the uh, improved water uh, for the Caucasus map as well, which you can probably already see in 2.2. Uh, And here we are, so let's go ahead and uh, slow down, put the brake out.
break in. And gear down. And flaps down to full. Let's go SCS. And HUD. Rolling on in. And I'm basically looking to um, fly the um, velocity vector inside of the AOA bracket and keeping the a uh, velocity vector on the runway threshold. And that should bring me on speed AOA. Very fast. Train. BBI is probably a little bit high there, it seemed. And note that the uh, airspeed indicator, its minimum is always uh, 48. That's going to Parker. Yeah, set the brake. Engines off. Battery off. And let's see, oxygen off. Lights back. Lights off. Full. Anti skid is on. Brake set. Lights. Iron is to off and radar to off. 
And that's a uh, early look here at the uh, the Hornet as well as the updated Caucasus map for 2.5. And in the future, I'm planning on doing uh, more of these as we add more features to the Hornet and um, give you, keeping you appraised of you know how we're coming along with this project. Um, and I think you'll be very pleased with it. Anyhow, I wish you all a fantastic new year and a great 2018. And I'll see you soon. Thanks.